shring ka e i la ring asa ka la ring sa ka la ring sa hoin kling ring shring namaste so i'm very pleased <laughs> in fact i'm totally ecstatic <laughs> to begin this new series on the Maha Shodashi Mantra. And this mantra is absolutely the best, most powerful, and most ecstatic, <laughs> blissful mantra ever. And I've done quite a bit of work with mantras over the years, so uh, I kind of have some insight into that. And if you try it, you will see. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. You should try it. So the Mahashodashi Mantra is the highest mantra of the worship of Ambal, the Supreme Goddess. So when we chant this mantra, we invoke her presence. It's magic. I'm telling you, it's just, I mean, it's hard to believe, okay? <laughs> so you have to ask some of our other people uh, who are on the chat group who are practicing this mantra, like Janardha and Maharaj. Um, you know, I'm not just I'm not just uh, smoking whatever here. Uh, <laughs> this is for real. So I want to share this with you. Now, the Mahashodashi Mantra is a big mantra, okay? It's for people in the last stages before liberation, okay? So you can't just jump up to this mantra because you won't be able to uh, maintain it. You'll fall down. Instead, there's another mantra called the Siddhi Mantra that you chant to prepare for Mahashodashi Mantra. And so we're going to cover the Siddhi Mantra today and in the next episodes we're going to go over the Shodashi Mantra itself. So let's take a look into Siddhi Mantra. First of all, what does Siddhi mean? Well, Siddhi means an accomplishment. A fulfillment. It also means prosperity, personal success, fortune, good luck, advantage, felicity, bliss, beatitude, and complete sanctification. So this mantra, this Siddhi mantra, is designed to give you the background, the foundation, the support to approach the Mahasodashi Mantra, be it being so very high and powerful. So if you chant this Siddhi Mantra for some time, then you can qualify for initiation into Mahasodashi. Actually, both have to be initiated. And the reason for that is, the Siddhi Mantra is derived from the D20 divisional chart of the uh, Jyotish birth chart. And it uh, involves the fifth and ninth house lords. So these things have to be calculated by uh, a very experienced and competent astrologer. It's not something you can do yourself. And it's not something that anybody, just anybody could do for you. I can't do it. <laughs> it takes experience. It takes uh, mature astrological judgment. So that's why I've been recommending and suggesting here numerous times that you approach uh, Santosh. Santosh Guru is uh, giving initiation into Siddhi Mantra. And you can email him. I put his email in. Uh, in the description, video description here. And I also put uh, a little essay by uh, his guru, Ravi Guru, uh, about this mantra. 
and then uh, you can learn everything you need to know about it uh, from them. And you should also correspond with Santosh. He's very helpful, really nice guy. So what about this mantra? Well, let's look at the structure of the mantra first. The Siddhi Mantra structure begins with Aum, followed by the Bija. Bija means seed, followed by the Mula. Mula means root, followed by the Deva. Deva means God or deity. And then closing with Namaha. Namaha means I offer my respectful obeisances bowing down with my head on the ground. So this is how we worship God. Uh, and the reason it has to be calculated by astrology is because, let's see, there's 27 nakshatras and each one has a different bija. There's 12 sun signs, each one has a different mula. And then there's your own uh, astrological situation, which points to an Ishta Deva or Devata, which is your personal deity. So these three terms, Bija, Mula, and Deva, derived from your astrological chart, result in more than 500,000 possible combinations of the uh, different terms in the mantra. So we're not going to try to uh, give like a general example, huh? but because you shouldn't chant it, okay? It's not yours. It has to be calculated for you as an individual. Santosh once told me that if you get the wrong mula or the wrong bija, it can ruin your spiritual life. So don't play around with this mantra. This is powerful stuff. Approach somebody who knows, uh, Santosh or myself, and get the initiation. But here's a, here's a typical example. Aum Hring Kling Parashakyai Namaha. So Hring is the Bija, Kling is the Mula, and the Deva is Parashakti. Now the nice thing about this mantra is that it's very casual, it's very informal. It doesn't require uh, like an initiation ceremony, although if you want to do that, that's nice. Uh, it's not required. Nor does it require nyasa. Nyasa is not the uh, National Space Agency. <laughs> it's, the, it's the internal space agency. <laughs> Where before chanting a mantra, you purify your hands, the, the fingers, your face, uh, other parts of the body and so on and put the different syllables of the mantra in the different places of the body to purify it. Uh, you can do that if you want and you can watch our video on the uh, uh, Siddha Lakshmi Stotram for an example how to do that and uh, the process is documented also in the the documentation that comes with that video. So then how do you know that the mantra is correct? Well, you have to try it. Um, Santosh recommends you chant the mantra as much as possible for 10 days. Well, what I did was I took three days. I kept silence. I didn't speak to anybody, didn't interact with anybody and just chanted this mantra like every minute of the day. And I was able to verify that, yep, this mantra definitely works. <laughs> so uh, you try the mantra. If there's anything wrong, if something inauspicious happens, or if you're not feeling blissful and happy, then you should consult with your initiator and get that straightened out. Now, there's also uh, no rules. In other words, you don't have to follow any regulative principles while chanting this mantra. So this mantra is for the spontaneous platform of bhakti. 
It is not for the karma yoga platform under rules and regulations. Okay, this is for those who want to go higher. So why do we need this mantra uh, before chanting Mahashodashi? It's because it's a catalyst. Uh, it's a catalyst for Mahashodashi. But what is a catalyst? A catalyst is a substance whose presence triggers a chemical reaction without the substance being consumed itself. In, the, in, the, in other words, it's not a reagent. It's not an ingredient to the reaction. It's simply there. Uh, like the silver electrodes in, uh, in these uh, lithium-ion batteries uh, that people have in their phones and cars and stuff like this. The silver does not get used up in the reaction. But if the silver isn't there, the reaction doesn't happen. There's some uh, structural quality of the molecules that makes that reaction take place or helps it along. In the same way, the Siddhi Mantra gives a structure which purifies the birth, the whole birth. Uh, that's the Siddhi we're talking about. When the whole birth is divine and sacred and becomes a channel for the Divine Mother, then we have Siddhi. We are a Siddha. We are a realized being. So you chant this Siddhi Mantra 24 times before and 24 times after, at least. You don't count it on the beads. You just chant it spontaneously so many times. And then when it feels right, you take up the Mahashodashi. But really, before you get initiated into Mahashodashi, you should chant this mantra for some time. Uh, I chanted it for like three months before accepting the Mahashodashi mantra. But we're going to go over Mahashodashi in the next few episodes, just so all the information is here in one place. We've been talking lately about bhakti and liberation. So bhakti, which is directed towards an entity seen as being outside of oneself, this is called anya bhakti. But bhakti, which is directed towards the self with a capital S, this is ananya bhakti, non-different or non-dual bhakti. Now, somebody may say, well, how is it possible to love God as yourself? <laughs> well, that's the whole point. You have to realize that the self, with a capital S, is God. You <laughs> and everybody else and everything else is nothing but Brahman. And though it may appear that there's duality, actually that duality is simply a mirage an appearance like a mirage in the desert. Uh, we've gone over this so many times. <laughs> but it's, it takes a while to sink in. Well, once you get it, you realize that, oh, this world, this life, this being is perfect just the way it is. And this is the most wonderful thing, the most satisfying thing in the world. To get up in the morning, and look out at the world, and the birds are chirping, uh, and you hear the temple bells, and the people chanting their mantras, and you hear uh, the cows uh, praying to the Divine Mother, Ma, Amma. <laughs> and you smell the fragrance of the earth and the air, you know, after a rain, uh, and everything is just perfect. Aum Tat Sat. <laughs>